Growing up as a Jehovah's Witness is a rather unique and interesting experience. Instead of having this, this wide world open to you of going off to college and celebrating birthdays and go, participating in holidays and participating in the world around you and gaining all of these experiences that you can look back at with fondness, your worldview is shrunken down to the size of a pumpkin seed. And that's exactly what a doomsday cult wants to do. Instead of thinking this world is big and dynamic and interesting, they want to shrink it down and make it very simplistic, simplistic to their own ends. So instead of having all of those experiences that the world offers, you are looking at a life of being 17 years old and playing Bible Pictionary with people three times your age, and that is considered something exciting because it breaks up the monotony of constantly studying and reading the Bible or preaching the Bible to other people. Now, as you get older and you try to look back at your life with fondness, because of this insular community that you've lived in, the only things to look back at fondness with are your experiences as a Jehovah's Witness, what you did for the organization. It's one of the things that makes people happy and nostalgic when they look back and see, wow, look at all of the things that I was able to accomplish and do. And even though it's a false sense, in my opinion, a, a false sense of happiness, it's still happiness if the person is so delusional that they think it is true and genuine happiness. And Watchtower kind of knows this, and they are always going on and on about their rich spiritual history. Here's just a couple of examples. Let's find out in this episode of Our History in Motion. But that changed in 1893 with the opening of the Chicago World's Fair. The fair drew millions of people, and with the railroads offering discounted rates to Chicago, the Bible students saw it as a perfect opportunity to invite the brothers and sisters for a five-day convention. They motivate and encourage us, unite us as brothers and sisters, and most importantly, draw us closer to Jehovah. Imagine what we will look back on at the 1,000th or 1 millionth anniversary of Kingdom Rule. The past 100 years helps us to appreciate that God's kingdom is real and that Jehovah God has been using that kingdom to accomplish His will on earth today. Yes, the organization is always looking back with nostalgia about what the organization used to look like. If you go onto their video section of their website, they have a tab separately just for history, and they have probably 50 videos all talking about the wonderful things that the organization has accomplished because it is one of the only things that people do have. The people making this website and making these videos are like me. They are don't have a lot to look back on other than their experiences as a Jehovah's Witness. So you can imagine my curiosity when I heard this. Well, looking back at what seems to be the good old days produces discontent with the present. And discontent can lead us to feeling ungrateful all for all that Jehovah is doing for us now. For the Israelites, that ingratitude also led to unfaithfulness and spiritual disaster ultimately. I swear, Watchtower, you've taken away everything from people. Do you have to try and police even their nostalgic memories of working for free within your organization? Oh, let's talk about it. Well, today's scripture text in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10, it might be good to read it in its entirety. It says here, do not say, why were the former days better than these? For it is not out of wisdom that you ask this. Now, it is possible 
that a person who reads this verse, perhaps for the first time, might disagree with this statement. For example, based on his own personal experience, an older person might remember the days when he was younger, he was healthier, he was stronger, he had energy to accomplish virtually anything he wanted to do. His memory was sharper. And now that he's getting older, he's forgetful, he's tired and grumpy. What about anointed brothers who make up the faithful slave? Well, they too need to be fed spiritually. Young ones, you are loved by Jehovah and his organization. The governing body is pleased to present the following video for your enjoyment. What is true love? Sometimes you'll hear people say of a little baby, look at that little angel. But more accurate would be to say, Look at that little enemy of God. How should we view a brother who chooses to grow a beard today? Now look at that word. We'll never, never find out the work that the true God has made from start to finish. So Jehovah says you'll never learn it all, you'll never do it all. And now that he's getting older, he's forgetful, he's tired and grumpy. Well, we might think the former days were better than the present, possibly. So what will help us to understand Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 10 a little better? Now, before we get into the heart of this, I think we should at least try and figure out or speculate about what this imbecilic lickspittle is up to here. Why has he been sent out by the, the governing body uh, to give this talk to the people that work at Bethel? For those of you that don't know, the Bethel uh, is just a Hebrew word for house God, so the house of God, uh, and that is their little cult compounds. Not little, they're actually quite massive, but they have thousands of people there that work there full time. So initially, this is given to the people that work and live at the cult compound, and then they select certain of these talks to be presented on their website, jw.org, so that way everyone can see it. But why this particular talk, why this particular message is it being given? Well, personally, I think it's something that I've been talking about for a while. And that is Jehovah's Witnesses that are older are usually seen as the ones that are the most stubborn. They don't want to change. They're going to stay in the religion no matter what. And I've had this weird sneaking suspicion, uh, mostly based off of people that have reached out that are older, that have been elders for 20, 30 years, that are now leaving the organization. And it's more than previously. It always felt like the people that would reach out that were leaving the organization were like in their late teens, early 20s. And just in the last couple months, I noticed it's a lot more people in their 60s and 70s. And I can't help but get this feeling that the organization is well aware that the changes that they have brought about in such a quick succession have virtually changed their organization. And they have done such a massive overhaul where the old watchtower is no longer recognizable. All of those things that made people feel special about it are all kind of gone. And the older Jehovah's Witnesses that have lived through this change are sitting there, you know, scratching their nuts and saying, what happened? What happened to that old watchtower that I knew as the truth? It's gone now. And now it's all about building New places of worship are building new movie studios. What in tarnation do we need a new movie studio for? This is crazy, this thing that I'm caught up in. Well, let's take our first example of the older person. Uh, the watchtower from which our text is taken says that older ones show humility, who show humility will have a realistic view of the way things were in the past. So how does that realistic view help? Well, although we recognize that some things were better in the past, many things are better now. Uh, for example, although a person may have had more energy and strength when they were young, most often as a person ages, they learn to work smarter, not harder. So to make a blanket statement, uh, why were the former days better than these, isn't realistic. It isn't wisdom, as the scripture says. 
In addition to helping us be realistic, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 10 helps us to be content. How so? Well, if we constantly view the past as being better, will we be content with the present? It's not likely. Uh, we will probably live in a constant state of discontent, wishing that we could go back in time. But is that realistic? And does that make us any happier? No, it's not wise. Now, I might be totally cooked in the head here, smoking the crack pipe, but I think he's indirectly talking about people's experience with the organization. As I said at the beginning, it's very hard to separate the Jehovah, individual Jehovah's Witnesses with the organization because their entire world is shaped around this specific community. So I think he is talk, tr like indirectly talking about the changes you've seen within the organization and looking fondly back at the good old days. What could he possibly be talking about with the good old days? Well, I've, it's something I've been talking about a lot lately, and I did an experiment where I sat in a room for 10 days straight and just kept reading Watchtowers endlessly, uh, basically trying to understand what the Watchtower was like back in their heyday, in the 90s, when things were really popping, when they were experiencing consistent growth that was well above the birth-death ratio of the world. And now Watchtower has plateaued. They are just barely keeping their heads above water with, you know, having enough people that are born into the religion to make up for the people that leave the religion. Just kind of just keeping keeping everything afloat. And I, I think he's referring to those good old days when Watchtower was giving people all kinds of spiritual food. Hundreds of of hours of spiritual food that people could consume, giving them these intellectually stimulating prophecies that they could try and correlate to world events, giving people a real sense of being special in, in, in an otherwise ordinary life. You could be a plumber or a window washer, and yet you are tapped into the secret codes of the universe. And right around the corner, you know, Satan is going to come down or Jesus is going to come down from heaven and shake up. And he's going to use the United Nations. And that's all because of a seven-headed wild beast in Revelation. Sounds kooky. But I think it's effective in giving people a sense that they are part of something meaningful and special. And they look back at that as exactly that, when they felt part of something. Now what do they feel part of? The most boring, generic, AI-generated crap. Their media productions are terrible now. If you compare even their old movies that they used to make, they were like documentaries, and they were informative and memorable. Now, I, I swear, the Jesus drama, I know I always mention this, but like 30% of that movie is just people looking at camera B going, and then slow motion Zack Schneider over at camera C. So what really solidifies in my head that he's not just talking about, hey man, I'm not as strong as I used to be, because that's not going to blow anyone out of the water, right? Everyone is intimately aware that as they get older, they have physical and mental limitations, Things aren't as easy as they once were. When someone gets up and their knees are creaking and it's hard to even sit on the toilet anymore, I don't think they need to be reminded, hey, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, did you know it's actually harder for you to sit on the toilet than it used to be? Hey, thanks for the encouragement, moron. So I don't think that that is exactly what he's at here. But when he talks about this, just be content with that. I feel like that is him just saying... Be content with how the changes of Watchtower might be affecting you and your mental state. Just be happy with it. I know you're probably looking fondly at when we were constantly building new kingdom halls and building congregations and you saw increase in the activity and now you ain't getting any of that anymore. But just be happy with the things you do get. Be happy with your one awake and your one Watchtower per month. 
Be happy that maybe every five years you'll get a new study publication. Be happy that you no longer have to read a yearbook full of encouraging experiences. I, I don't know if for those of you that don't know, they used to release this 175, 190-page book every year that was a, a compilation of what the organization kind of was doing around the world and what Jehovah's Witnesses in other you know countries all over the place were experiencing. And it always resulted in, wow, look at how few publishers or Jehovah's Witnesses there were here, and now look at how many publish or Jehovah's Witnesses that there are. So it was all about increase in growth. Back in 2016, they just axed it and said, no, nah, we don't have time for that anymore. But the point of what I'm trying to say is, are Jehovah's Witnesses here just being told to shut up? Shut up and be happy and content with what they give you. And I got to be honest with you, it is one of the most irritating and frustrating things that they are always propagating. See, being a Jehovah's Witness means you are not allowed to ask questions. You are only allowed to accept the evidence that is given to you, to your face by, I mean, evidence, I put in really cringe air quotes here, but accept just the evidence that's right in front of you. You can't do anything more than that. You just have to only look at that. And it is so prohibitive. You have to be able to look at life in something broader than just what is given to you on the front. That is how discoveries are made. That is how the world becomes a better place, is by people asking questions and challenging things, by people dreaming and aspiring. And yet, I feel so bad for people just leaving because I know I've experienced the exact same thing. When your brain can't do that, your mind can only go, well, what's the playbook? What, what do I do? Always looking for answers from someone else always or thinking that there is an answer in the first place instead of just I don't know doing <laughs> just just make it up just try something experiment and it's okay to fail it's okay to succeed it's okay to be right it's okay to be wrong instead of having that mentality it's just this binary ones and zeros nonsensical way of looking at things and i'm sorry for this long rant but i'm not sorry for this long rant because i think it's important and when he's talking about this that word just irritates me just be content that was like the number one thing i heard growing up is just no matter what it is just be content if there's an answer or if you have a question about something in the bible just be content until the governing body gives you the answer just be content until, you know, you have your pseudo evidence and then now you don't have to be content anymore. Are you happy now? It is a terrible way to live your life. So whether you're just leaving or you've been out a long time, make sure you take a step back and remember it is okay to, to think bigger. But Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 10 can also help us in a more sobering way. An article in our 2018 Midweek Workbook said, When we experience difficulties, it's easy to long for the good old days, perhaps the days before we came into the truth. When doing so, we often exaggerate the joys and minimize the problems of the past. And that is what the Israelites did after they left Egypt. Through the rose-colored lens of nostalgia, they remembered the fish and the melons and the vegetables, but not the hard slavery that made their lives miserable every single day. So they actually viewed the former days as better. In fact, looking back at the past actually blinded them to all that Jehovah was doing for them right then in the present. Looking back at the past with rose-colored glasses, only extracting the good and forgetting about all the bad? Huh. I wonder who does that. I don't know. But I think I have these on the floor. Maybe this is a great example. This is the 20, I forget, like 2012 of something or another. History of the Jehovah's Witnesses. This one, 
is from the 90s, History of Jehovah's Witnesses. They are the masters of reducing their own history down and looking at it through rose-colored glasses. They try and just narrow it down. This is a perfect example. They've just taken anything that could give someone a reason to think for themselves out and whitewash their history about only the happy, clappy, good stuff. They are the ones that absolutely do this. And to think that they're going so far in their paranoia to control the way people think that they want it to be a thought crime. And that's exactly what this is. This is them trying to control people's thinking. If they look back fondly about that Christmas when they weren't a Jehovah's Witness, about all the family that was there and opening presents and eating cookies and the basketball game was on in the background and grandma was drunk and telling stories and everyone was having a knee slap and good time. They want you to scrub that from your memories and just look back at that and say, man, those toys were really expensive that we bought for those kids, and they hardly even played with them. Oh, man, I, I bet Grandma would have lived a few more years if she didn't have that drink down there. Oh, man, you know, that was really expensive that they flew all the way out here with their three kids. That money could have been better well spent something else. They want you to scrub the happy times from your life just so they can force you to be not even happy with your present life, just be content with what you have now. It, it is so sad to see an organization that historically has covered up every bad thing that they've ever done or said or wrong thing they've ever done or said and just swept it under the rug like it doesn't exist to try and tell other people under their control to uh, that they are the ones to blame. I know what you guys are doing. You, I bet you're only looking at things through rose-colored glasses. Nah, dude. That's what you guys at Watchtower HQ do. Oh, manna provided another advantage that perhaps the Israelites didn't think about. Remember that they never knew when that miraculous cloud was going to lift, and suddenly the whole camp was going to have to follow that cloud to another location. Can you imagine, even if you did bring some watermelon seeds with you from Egypt, and you managed to plant a few, and you started watering them, and all of a sudden what happens? The cloud lifts and the whole nation begins to depart long before you get to harvest your watermelons. Well, we can see that manna was actually a perfect solution in every way. And yet by looking back at the past, the Israelites were blinded to all that Jehovah was doing for them in the present. I hate that he has extracted that lesson from this biblical story so much. Don't plant seeds that could, you know, bear fruit and help you and your family survive and who knows, maybe even prosper in the future. Don't do that because Jehovah's cloud, it just moves willy nilly. And as we know, that cloud was literally moving willy nilly, wandering in like a figure eight around a desert for no reason whatsoever. So here Jehovah's Witnesses are being told, you know, Learn from the Israelites. Follow God's organization today, the governing body, as they operate and do this willy-nilly moving things around. Women can wear pants. Men can have beards. You don't have to report your time. Who knows what's to come for the changes that they'll make. So don't, don't bother planting your watermelon seeds. Don't bother investing in yourself or in your future because things are going to just change anyway. Just be content with what we tell you and with what we give you. This talk is really starting to annoy me. So, what lessons do we learn from Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 10? Well, looking back at what seems to be the good old days produces discontent with the present. And discontent can lead us to feeling ungrateful all, for all that Jehovah is doing for us now. For the Israelites, that ingratitude also led to unfaithfulness and spiritual disaster, ultimately. In this regard, note this comment from the 2012 Watchtower. It says, although it is not wrong to meditate on the lessons we have learned from past experiences or to savor cherished memories, 
we need to maintain a balanced, realistic view of the past. Otherwise, we could accentuate our dissatisfaction with our present circumstances. So, if we avoid viewing the past through the blurry lens of nostalgia, if we cultivate contentment with the present and we keep our eyes focused on the kingdom and the real life, well, we'll be happier and also more likely to remain faithful. As Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 10 reminds us, the better days are not behind us. They're actually just ahead. So after this organization gets done purging you of a family, of a personality, of all of your ambitions, of all of your time, of your critical thinking skills, everything, they also want to purge you of your happy memories inside or outside the organization. Don't think too much about things that make you happy. Imagine that. Imagine sitting there and being told to be careful about thinking about things that make you happy. That is a perfect window into the mind and life as a Jehovah's Witness or of a Jehovah's Witness. When someone exercises so much control over your life that they will get you second-guessing your thinking about your own happy memories. Talk about some paranoia. And Jehovah's Witnesses will be sitting there thinking, oh man, I remember last time we had an international convention and everyone will start dogpiling. Why do you got to be comparing it to the last time we had an international convention? Didn't you listen to that thing on the JW broadcast? Don't you know that we really should be focused on this year's convention? Why worry about how many people we had back then? Why worry about how many people got baptized? We need to be focused on the now. You know, you might just fall out of the truth, won't you? And you're going to, and you already know that there's going to be some Karen that is implementing this and making the people around them completely miserable because of this. But because they released this, I thought it would be a perfect way to uh, talk about some of the videos that are going to be coming up very soon. I know I've already talked about it a little bit, but I want to do a little bit more of a deep dive into what happened to this organization. What happened? What was the downfall from sort of their peak in the 90s until now and some of the observations that I had. So it's going to include stuff about their artwork and the Bible stories that they used to tell. Uh, just the overall quality of writing and just a lot of other different things. So look out for those. It'll probably be like three, four videos or so, something like that. But those should be coming out here in the next week or two. So with all that being said, hope you enjoyed this one. And don't forget to stay safe, be kind, and to show yourself the same kindness that you show to others. And for th the love of God, for the love of holy beans everywhere, please don't forget to dream. Actually, speaking of that, one of my favorite quotes is from Walden, one of my favorite books. I read it every year. If you have built castles in the sky, you need not worry. That is where they should be. Now, put the foundation under them. Thanks, Thoreau.